Hello and welcome back to Let's Build Drod RPG. In the first part I built this room and I think it would be good to start the second part by just taking a look back at the room to check whether the choices are reasonably balanced and whether there's anything I would prefer to do differently. So one thing that you may have found disappointing in the previous video is that there isn't much science to it. I just put things down and see whether they feel right to me. And that's because not every choice has to be perfectly balanced. In fact, it can't be because you're always trading different types of resources. And what, what is important is that a choice should feel balanced. For example, here there's um, a times four large potion, so that's 800 HP. And to me it feels right that that's something you can get for a green key or two yellow keys, but not for just one yellow. Um, part of that is the scoring system. In fact, 800 HP, um, 40 HP are worth one point, so 800 HP are worth 20 points, which is exactly the same as a green key. Um, but I don't, I don't really mean balanced in that sense, because HP is something that you have to continually pick up throughout a hold. So it's important that different ways of getting, of getting it are balanced against each other. If there were something like um, a single potion beyond three green and three yellow doors, then the player just isn't going to attempt to go that way. And these, these kinds of rules of thumb, what balances against what, is something you, you only really find out through experience of playing RPG holds and trusting that other architects are going to have similar um, similar feelings to you and make similar choices available in their own rooms. Um, so for example one thing I was considering after I closed the previous video is whether this choice is um, calibrated correctly. A, a plus four defense, plus four attack, and a green key for, as we saw, 900 damage going in and another 900 coming out. And one thing is that the green key can immediately be swapped for uh, for 800 HP. So you can think of it as a trade of 1000 HP for the attack and defense. And 1000 HP for four defense, as I discussed in the previous video, uh, would only pay for itself if you're going to take 250 more hits afterwards, which is not very likely as we're near the end of the hold. Uh, the attack does make it more tempting because attack is very important if you're going to reach attack thresholds soon. And one thing that we saw in the previous video was that even if the player gets the new sword, they still need to pick up attack gems to cross a threshold for rock giants, which I have a suspicion will be an important one in this level. I think other architects may include rock giants in their rooms as well as me. So, in fact, this seems fair enough as it is. I probably will not add a potion. And one reason is that if you pick up the shield, um, that saves you 50 damage from each hit. So it's only 260 in, 256 out, even less if you've got some defense gems. We could say approximately 250 times 6 is 1500 and a blue key you can also use a blue key to obtain that for free 
uh, in the scoring system, a blue key is worth 1,200 HP. So using a blue key to save 1,500 could be worth it in scoring terms, but it depends on what else is available for the blue key. So in fact, at the moment, this seems like quite a reasonable choice. Um, one other thing, um, I'm going to put a green key there behind the Slayer because I noticed that that's a square that's difficult to reach but at the moment not used for anything. And I realised that I placed this giant and this evil eye with the intention that the player is coming from the south side but they could of course enter from the northeast. If they enter from the northeast then even without the sword, the sword and shield, this first rock giant is just um, lose 750 HP, get back 800. So I'm going to make that a little bit tougher to reach by including um, two evil eyes. This key that you have to step in front of the evil eye to reach costs 578, which is a lot for just one yellow key. Um, and I'm not sure if I can tone that down, really. What about a, a slayer does less? But if I put a slayer there, then there's the same... Oh no, there isn't the same problem, because this tile is available. So I'm going to change this to a Slayer, I think. And now you can get that key for 310, which is more reasonable for a yellow key. Okay, I think... I think I'm done with this room. I'm going to move these up one, so just just to decrease the the danger of accidentally um, combating them when you don't mean to if you enter from the south and kill this rock giant to enter these two side rooms. And now that this room is done, let's take a look at the second room. As you can see from the map, this is in one of the corners, so it's potentially one of the hardest rooms to reach, along with this room. Um, this one in between is just a tunnel connecting the two, so it's as if there were a direct connection. But I should work on the assumption that this is one of the hardest rooms to get into, so... Uh, I'm free to put more difficult stuff in this room and to assume that it's quite likely the player has already got the hook and night shield before coming in. Now one thing I want to do here, because I didn't do it in my other room, is I want to use some more of the custom monsters Hyperme has provided. Uh, I think the top tier monsters are too difficult even for a room where you have the um, Hook and Night Shield. Although the Tri-Skipper, the thing about the Tri-Skipper is it strikes when adjacent, so you can use it for choices where you're not necessarily trying to fight it. Although its attack is low compared to its other stats. So uh, at the moment it would only hurt me for roughly 200 and for much less even when I have the shield. Now I could combat that by putting a brain in the room, but uh, some of the other monsters have um, high but reasonable damage, so 1950, 1410, 1200. These could make interesting choices where you can either take one hit or you can decide to kill them. And I'd like to use some of those choices in my second room. Uh, let's have a look at what they do with the Hook and Night Shield. The Collector is now, um, is still high. That's because 
Um, that's because I haven't crossed an attack threshold for him. Let's just look. 360 plus 120, um, 480. So that would that's out of reach. So the collector is always going to be a high damage monster unless you uh, either use the altar a lot or else go to the next level and come back. It is always worth bearing in mind, of course, that the player can do that, can skip, can try to breeze through levels as quickly as possible, um, go to the next level where the multiplier is higher and it might be easier to get certain stats and then come back down to clear up the previous level. And that's one thing I didn't do very well in this room, and I, I didn't explain this in my previous video, but one big disadvantage to the way this room is set up is that you can reach the 330 attack threshold um, on the next level and then come back to this one and all the seep are now free. So that's something I want to bear in mind. But yes, um, if I take the hook and night shield, collectors still do high damage. Evil eyes only strike once now and not at all if you can get them from behind, but they have a high attack, so that one stroke is still powerful. Uh, the grub, Grumpy Goblin, I can see he's, he's hitting me three times. So, if, if, the, if there's something beyond a Goblin so such that he can only strike you once, um, then it's very cheap. So I can put in some choices where you can um, choose either to walk past him or fight him. And walking past him will be very cheap. Fighting him will be more expensive but still in the realm of something the player might choose to do. And I notice that he doesn't give any Greckles or reputation. I think that's a mistake on Hypermi's part. I think that's... Um, quite likely to be something that will be fixed before the release. So I'm going to work on the assumption that um, that he will not continue to give zero. Okay, so we're in this room, which has the interesting feature that if you're entering from the west, there are three different entrances you might come by. Um... I'm going to make this middle one have direct contact with the south via a pair of tunnels. Now, what's interesting about this tunnel setup is that it's one way. You can do that, but you can also step off it diagonally. Um... Did I say one way? I'm, that's not actually what I meant. So if you're coming from the middle entrance there, you can get into here and you can get back. Uh, but you can also come from here and step off the tunnel diagonally. So I think that's quite an interesting thing to do without being too um, intrusive. So now, the player might come from any of these entrances. Let's let's just put them. Mm, I don't like that so much now. I'll, I'll leave the walls like that and I'll put down some um, well it's referred to as road. It's kind of stony path tiling. Um, so what do we do now? In the first room that I made, there's quite a lot of defence and attack available. Um, maybe I want to go a bit lighter on those and make this a room where you can get keys. So let's put in, for example, a Grumpy Goblin. And let's say that you have to kill him to get at that green key. But there's a yellow key that you can get to just by taking one hit, like this. Whoops. Like that. And that's... was that... yes, 200, which is okay for a yellow key. Uh, it's actually pretty cheap, so I might put in a Greckle Gate as well. 
Um, but one thing to notice. Actually, let, let's take out the Greckle Gate because there is already an interesting choice here. If you come into this room before you are ready to fight the Goblin and take the uh, yellow key, you end up taking more hits than if you kill the Goblin straight off, which immediately gives you both keys. Um, and I could put a, another yellow on the other side of him. Okay, but I still think we want to make this whole um, corner of the room harder to access. So I'll put in a yellow door, and now you have to take 200 damage uh, just to get that yellow key back, and you can get another key for another 200. Uh, let's look again. When Right, 1200 is how much damage the goblin is doing at the start. And because I like symmetry, let's have something here that mirrors that. Now let's look back at the types of enemy that are available. So the Grumpy Goblin uh, strikes when you turn your back to it. Um, for that kind of 3x3 three three room setup, it, um, oh, an Ancient Eye is a possibility. Now the Ancient Eye is 1950 without the hook. With it, it goes down to 600, so that's a big difference. So let's put in two Ancient Eyes. Now one thing is that the Ancient Eye, although it's harder to kill than the Evil Eye, uh, because it has such high defence, its attack is not very high. It's even less than the goblins, so I have two eyes facing this square, so it costs 300 damage to cross. And that seems fairly reasonable for if a green key is the reward. Now let's imagine that you come in here and you have the hook. So 600 damage if you kill that eye, 600 total if you don't, but if you kill the eye, then you still have to be damaged by the other one. So again, let's put in some rewards for doing that. And now we have a, we have a setup that's kind of the opposite to this one in that you can rush in and take the green key, but it's a slightly more profitable. If you're going to want to kill the eyes later anyway, it's more profitable to kill them first, and then the green key is free. So I'm quite pleased with how those have worked out. Let's put in some... Uh, let's, let's put down some more road to keep things consistent. Okay, so that's used two more of the... Uh, custom monsters. Do any others look interesting? Uh, the Tri Skipper, because this this um, area is an odd um, an odd number of tiles high. Uh, it has it has a middle, so it's appropriate to put one monster in the middle. Um, so if I put in a Tri-Skipper, now remember how, how much... So the Tri-Skipper is impossible to kill um, until I get the hook at least. But it only does 200 damage per, uh, per hit. Um, with the hook, killing it is pretty much... What about with the hook and Night Shield? Um, killing it is still really difficult to do, so you're going to want to take the hits. Um, so what can I put? Um, well, one thing is that this is getting too close to this yellow door. You can get around it by opening the door. So I would like to prevent that. 
And now you have to take one hit to go in here or, and another to come out. That's still only 400 damage, so not very much. It would be nice to uh, move this back a little. Okay, so now anything that's here or here, you can get for 400 damage. Anything that's here costs 600. Um, I've already put a lot of keys down in the in this room, so let's make it gems this time. Um, yeah, one attack, two defense. That sounds fair enough. Um, one thing that's a bit obnoxious is that putting down an area of a particular floor type will erase water, so I have to put the water back. Um, this is a water skipper based enemy, so although it doesn't have the um, water dwelling as a feature when I call up the... Um, yeah, water skipper has water dwelling as a feature, but this doesn't, even though it's based on the water skipper, um, which is a bit odd, but then again, both uh, water skippers and custom monsters based on them can be placed on land if you want. It, it, just, it, it just looks neater to place them in water. Okay, so we've done something interesting with this portion of the room. Nothing here so far. Um, this is a passage from this side to the room below. I don't really want to put, uh, for instance, a yellow door here because then it could turn out to be the case that you can just get round it for nothing. And then that yellow door would just be an annoyance to the player. So I'm going to put down... Um, what, what, what was that swordsman type? Oh yes, I've just remembered and noticed that um, although I haven't been considering this, some of the custom enemy types from the previous level can still be interesting monsters. So here the Zweihender Man, um, 750 damage to kill it, and that's the same as the damage he does in just one stroke. Um, 350 is the amount of attack you need to one-shot it. So I could use that and put in a key, and then I'm just being nice to the player. I'm saying, here's something free when you get 350 attack. To give them an extra incentive to find that hook. Anyway, what was the custom um, swordsman type? Here, the collector and the collector expected damage is 1410 and his single hit is high it's 720 minus my defense so at the moment that's 470 um, but I've just put that down so I'm not going to put a collector down but I could put use collectors for this and this portion of the room. So let's put in... This This one is wider than this, so let's put something like this down. Um, oh, that's, that's not symmetrical, so I'll put those back after all. <laughs> Just, just me and my symmetry. Feel free to ignore it if you think I'm being a bit silly. So, if there is a collector here, then you have to cross his sword twice to get whatever's here, so that would be an appropriate thing for a green key. On the other side, I could have a yellow key that you only have to take uh, one hit for. And now I feel mm, maybe I'm giving a few too many keys, maybe put in some doors as well. Let's put a door there and then you have to open this um, you have to open this area to get that to get anything from it. but I'll put in a potion to give you an incentive to do that. Um, this top 
thing is just going to be a passage around it now, so I'm not going to put any monsters down there. Um, so what else, what else can I put now? I could put in some more collectors. I could put one here uh, who has a defense gem under his sword. And one who's guarding an attack gem. And if I put that on an ortho square, then you need to kill the collector to get it. Uh, but that looks a bit weird, so I'll put wall there. And um, I'll put this floor type in these two areas to make them stand out a bit more. So now I think this room might be finished. I could put more here, but there's already quite a lot of choices in this room. And there are seven of us working on this level. Um, so with that many rooms, I don't feel so much of a need to cram the individual room with a lot of choices. So I am now just considering whether this room is now done. Um, there's Goblin, there's an Ancient Eye, there's incentives to kill all of those. Uh, do I want to include any of the other custom monsters? I, I don't have to include everything, of course. And I, I did think as soon as I saw these Figundo and Prime Roach, they're a bit too, too high. Um, it's going to be very hard to get enough attack even to hurt them, and the Prime Roach has a lot of HP as well, so when you do get that much attack, you're still going to need to get a lot more before uh, you can realistically damage it. Although it's um, Greckles and Reputation rewards are suitably high for that. Um, I've placed a lot of keys in this room, so there's a lot of stuff you can get. So I think maybe all I'll do now is I'll just put in some more, um, more keys for health trades. Can I, uh, use force arrows here to... Um, if I do that, then you can just open this and take both of those if you have a... Uh, I don't like any of this. Uh, I don't like it when there's so, so little space as that. I am now thinking of... Well, that, that one I can do. You now have to open the green door to get that potion. And I can put, yeah, I can put two bottles like that. Ah, uh, but then opening this door, no, that's fine. I put force arrows like that, and then you have to open both yellow doors to get both potions. Um, put in a wall square there because that looks better. Okay, I think both of my rooms are now done. I look forward to seeing how this will play out when they're part of a finished level and it's just possible that there will be balancing issues that will make me come back and do another architecture video showing how I fix those um, but otherwise will otherwise you'll just have to wait and see until the time when I do a let's play of the finished hold so until then Thank you for watching.